Today we are going to learn all about speech recognition in the browser. Well, it's not perfect, it's actually really impressive that you can do this without any libraries or external APIs. Just do it straight in the browser. So let's open up our index-start and fill us open. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to keep the sucker running while I explain what we got going on. It's some hilarious uh, results here. So we've got speech recognition. It's a global variable that lives in the browser, um, and that lives on top of the window. Now, in Chrome, it lives at WebKit speech recognition, and currently it's only all... Uh, it's only available in Firefox. So the right here, what we're doing is we're just setting it to be speech recognition, uh, even if it is WebKit speech recognition. Then what we need to do is go ahead and create a new instance of speech recognition. So this guy's still going. Yes. So we will say const recognition equals new speech recognition. And then we need to take that recognition variable and set something called the interim results. And that has to be true. And that, what that's going to do is as you are speaking, you can see right here, as I'm speaking, it's sort of populating it. And if you don't do that, you need to stop speaking before it will give you anything. That's a bit frustrating. So we want to be able to see what we're saying as we are speaking. So we got our interim results here. Then what we need to do is create a paragraph. And if I inspect this right here, you'll see what's happening is that I'm updating the last paragraph in here. And then when I stop speaking, it creates a new paragraph as if we were saying a new sentence. And then when I stop speaking again, it's going to create a new paragraph. And the browser is going to tell us when it's finished uh, processing what I'm <laughs> the browns. <laughs> this is the best one ever. All right. So we've got that recognition, we need to create a paragraph. So I'll say let p equals, and I'll tell you why I'm using let there in just a second. We'll say document dot create element, and that's going to be a paragraph. And then we also need to uh, get this words right here, div with a class of words. So we say const words equals document dot query selector dot words. And then we'll take that words and we'll append the child P, which is going to be our first one because we want to put it in the DOM just as we are working with it. Next, this works just the same as listening for clicks. So we take our recognition and we add an event listener, but we don't listen for click, but we listen for a result. And when the result comes back, we're going to get an event, which let's just let's just take a look at what that actual event gives us here. Console log. E. So give that a save. Now you do have to run this through a server, just like we did with the webcam. You can't just run it on a file. It has to be localhost or something like that. So take your index file and run it through some sort of server. If you're not sure, I've created a quick, um, where is it here? I've created a quick little server for you here in the speech detection folder. All you need to do is type npm install. And then when that's installed, you type npm start. And what that will do is it's going to open up a little server for you. And then we open up the index dash start. Now that will probably pop open a little uh, dialog box that will say, can this access your microphone? And you will say yes or no. Um, but as we start speaking, actually, we don't see anything just yet. And that's because we haven't started it. So take your recognition and call recognition.start because you don't want to necessarily run it on page load because you might want to prompt the user that, hey, we're going to ask for your microphone. Don't turn it down. Otherwise, we won't be able to see this. So there we go. Now it should be running. So we see our paragraph tag being put into here. We've started it. We have an add, oh, add event listener result singular, not results. Now, when you speak into the microphone, you should be seeing something popping up in your console. Now, when you speak into the microphone, you should be seeing some speech recognition events pop up into your console. Now, when you speak into your microphone, you should see some speech recognition event results 
just flooding into your console. Now, if you don't see anything, make sure that you don't have like the answer or anything else that's jacking your microphone up open in another tab. That's something I spent way too much time debugging. And you just have to realize like sometimes the microphone would be used on another tab. So we have this event and let's just find a random one right here. Open up that event and go to the results. Inside of the results, let's just console e dot results. That is going to be a list of results. And I say list because it's not an array. It looks like an array, but if you open up the prototype and see what's in there, you'll see that there is no map or for each or anything like that. And that's going to be a bit of an issue for us. So uh, we can convert that to an array or use the ES6 for of to iterate over it. So here we've got a list. And if you open each of those up, you'll see there's another thing inside of there. This data is so nested. Open it up once more time. And then you see that is going to be. And then the second one, we'll say, open it up again, it keeps jumping around. That is going to be a list of. And it tells you what the person said. And then as well as its confidence, like this one is 89% confidence. That's, a, that's what I said. And here it's like less than a percent confident. And it builds up confidence over time as it as it gets to analyze it a few more times. And then finally, there is an is final Boolean here, which tells us is the person done speaking that sentence. So what we really need to do here is to take this sort of mess of nested stuff and convert it into just a plain old string that we can see. So let's go into here and we'll say const transcript equals array dot from and we need to convert it to an array e dot results because it's not an array by default and then we're going to just map over each of them and then just turn it from one thing to another so first thing i want to do is just grab uh the first thing from each of them because this is the list and we need to grab the first thing from each of them so we could actually just take So we are going to map over it and take the first thing that we have there. So I'm going to put this on its own line and we're going to map. The result is going to return the result square bracket zero. because that's the first thing that is there. And then if we console log the transcript, let's see what we've got. Hello, I love to pet dogs. Okay, let's see, open it up. Some of them are going to be two things like this one will tell me that Hello, I love. And the second thing that it gives us, it's so nested, the pet dog. And then I'm sure that it would correct it as we go along. So good. And then we need to map over that once more and return the result dot transcript. Hello, I love to pet dogs. There we go. Look at what we've got here. We've got arrays coming in. I'm going to run it one more time. Hello, I love Walmart. <laughs> there we go. Sometimes, LOL. <laughs> How did it know that I was actually laughing out loud? That's amazing. Um, I've got an array of the different pieces that it thinks I said. So what we need to do finally is join those two pieces together because we don't want two strings or three strings or one string. We just want one big string. So join at the end. I'm going to take this console log out. Now when I say something, now, when I say something, it tells me exactly what I have. You will notice that if you stop speaking and then start speaking again, it doesn't work. And, and why is that? And that's because we're listening for the result. But then once the result is finished, it does it like unbinds itself. It's no longer listening. So what we need to do is add a second event listener for the end event. And when that ends, we simply just call the function, we can just tell it when it ends, run the function for us, recognition.start. We don't run it here because that would run on page load, but we just supply it the name of the function that it will then call. So if we give that a save, now when I start talking, and after a break, it will start up again. And that's because this end event is firing, which in turn is going to add the event listener. Uh, it's going to start listening for it again. Good. 
Now what we need to do is create a paragraph tag where we can put these paragraphs. Actually, we already have a paragraph tag. So right down here, we simply just say p dot text content is equal to transcript. Now when I start talking, we should see it in the DOM. But when I start talking again, it overwrites it. Hmm, what's going on here? Well, what's happening is that if I'm done with that sentence, this is going to run again and replace it. So what we need to do is check if the result is final. So we say if e dot results, the first one dot is final, then we need to create a new paragraph. We're going to overwrite this paragraph we created on page load. So we just say p equals, nope, don't put a var or let in front of it. We're going to overwrite this existing one here. p equals document dot create element p. And then we'll stick that sucker in the words so dot append child p. Now, when we talk, it should add a paragraph. And when I talk again, it should add a second paragraph. And a third exclamation mark. Do you get the point question mark? Sweet. Seems to be working. So that is the very basics of speech recognition that we have here. It's actually not a lot of code. What you could do with this now is that now that we have this transcript, you could say like if transcript dot uh, as it contains unicorn, then console log unicorn. Whoa. I love dogs. Oh, it's not contains. It includes. I love dogs. I love unicorns. Hey, and when you say the word unicorn, it triggers it and, and goes off. So what you could do is you could listen if it includes like get the weather and then it would run a function that would console log getting the weather. Siri, go get the weather. And then it will run this getting the weather function. Obviously, you'd have to debounce that or only run it once every so often because it will run it multiple times. But you get the point here. I've seen people hook this up to uh, external weather APIs or to other functions. And you can basically have a hands off application that listens for what you're saying behind the scenes. And when it sees those words that you want, it will trigger some sort of other function. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I would love to see what you build with this. There's just a whole world that opens up when you have speech recognition. So uh, please let me know what you create. Thanks, and I'll see you tomorrow.